Hello everybody, this is a new Render Talk video and it's um, dealing with setting up a small and simple wood scene in Cinema 4D R13. And I would like to show you two things and this is first of all how to create a scene like this, how to dispatch one object as a number of copies on a given plane, and then how to render this. And for the rendering I will show you how to do this in V-Ray for Cinema 4D how to choose the right parameters to not get mad with render times. So first of all, as I said, the first part is how to create a, an object scene like this. And I would like to stick to some dummy scene before, just to show you how this principally works. And then in a second step, show, how to, show you how to uh, do this with real 3D trees. Okay, we'll change to Cinema 4D, of course. And first of all, the most important tool you have to know for doing this, for setting up a scene like this, is the cloner tool. The cloner tool is very, um, very intelligent. Um, it's very intelligent to use this cloner tool for dispatching objects, uh, object copies in a, a number you like on a given plane or something. And uh, you ha have this cloner tool when you have the MoGraph module and it's coming, I think, with a studio bundle of Cinema 4D. Um, if you would like to read something about this, um, I would like to recommend my own book and it's Cinema 4D Tips and Tricks and I'm showing you there how to build up a small hedge using the cloner tool and basically I'm repeating stuff from this book and um, when I try to show you how this works when building up a wood scene. So first of all I would like to have a plane as a kind of floor or something, a terrain where the um, trees have to stand on and I would like to have a 20 by 20 meters um, dimension. This is my plane and then I won't deal with 3D trees in the first place but with a more simple representative of it like for example a cylinder. So I would like to show you how this cloner tool works and how the random effector works by doing this with a dummy, a very simple representation of a possible and, uh, you know, later 3D tree. And of course this is rather thick, I would like to have a 15 centimeters radius and let's choose 6 meters height. So it's, it could be a small tree, but um, of course only as a dummy. So this is a cylinder and a plane and what I need as a third object is my cloner. And you can find this cloner in the MoGraph menu, and it's a command. I integrated this cloner into my interface. It's found in here, because I use this very often. I just, you know, made this a button in my layout. And this doesn't do a thing until you make the cylinder a child of the cloner. You know, this kind of dealing with um, tools coming as objects, making them childs of other, ob uh, other objects just to have certain effects. So this is what you do to have the cylinder cloned. Don't bother with the first result, what the cloner is doing in the first place, because we very soon will change this. The cloner has to be checked and then you have access to, the, to its parameters. First of all, the mode shouldn't be linear, but object. So this uh, enables the cloner to dispatch and arrange objects on a, a certain object and of course you have to tell the cloner tool which kind of object the cylinder should be um, put on and we need the plane, we just drag it down to this field called object. Okay. One of the annoying things Cinema 4D does one of the few annoying things Cinema 4D does is that it puts the cloned objects just right down to this plane in the first place. <coughs> I'm sorry, which is of course very strange. And what you have to do is just uncheck a line clone. Okay? They're standing up, as you can see. When I hit render, you see a certain, a very regular arrangement of cylinders. And as you might imagine, the clones, the copies, are just put on the vertices of the plane. When you um, click on the plane, you see that you've got segments. You can change the number of segments, as you might know. And the intersecting points are just the place where the cylinders are positioned. So, of course, as we want to have a wood, we want to stick to this kind of 
cloning, but uh, I would like to show you just how this can be changed. You can change the number of segments, and as you can see the number of copies changes too, because the mode is vertex, and that means that the copies are always put on the vertices. Okay, so, but as I said, this is not what we want. Let's put it, uh, put it to 20 again, because I need this segmentation later on. Okay, so what do we do? We go back to the cloner tool, check it, and in the, in the objects tab you don't choose distribution vertex, which is chosen by default, but surface. And now we have the a result which seems perfect for us, building up a tree, uh, a wood, I'm sorry, building up a wood because trees don't stand like in line like they used in the cylinders uh, did before, but more or less like this, in groups and, you know, with uh, varying distances and so on. So this is surface distribution, okay? Mode, object, um, fix um, align clone dechecked distribution surface and now you have two parameters that you can change and first of all the count is responsible for how many trees you've got there how many cylinders I'm sorry these are not trees yet and this is quite funny of course you can just change the density of the wood and the seed value just changes the position the maximum is 100,000 and you can go down by increments like this and you see how the position changes whenever you change the seed count and you can go back to former values and the position will be right the same you see that the position of the 100,000 seed value is ever the same and when you go back you'll have it again so you can try these out Later on, when we've got a fixed camera view and our terrain and we want to have a nice image, we don't want to have the trees stand around like, you know, like they want, but like we want. So we, use the, we will use the seed value to just change the perspective and the image. So this is uh, quite funny. And as you might imagine, this is the right way to have a small wood scene. Of course, this should be a real terrain and not just a horizontal plane and these should be real trees or imagine other objects like stones bushes and so on so there's some more stuff to talk about first of all the cylinders are not placed correctly you see they are fixed with their midpoints so what we have to do is to change the axis system of the original cylinder and the axis system of the original cylinder is, as you know, in the middle of the cylinder and it should be at the bottom. Okay, so uh, the original cylinder is um, somewhere here. Let's switch the, uh, the cloner tool off for a moment. Stick to this uh, original cylinder, which by the way is not showing up in the um, cloned arrangement. You can see the Original is standing in the middle, in the zero point of my whole scene, and when I switch the cloner on, this original cylinder is gone, it doesn't show up in the scenery. So this is, of course, um, just correct. Now I switch the cloner tool off, and click on the cylinder and move the axis down to its bottom. So, as you might know, this can't be done when this cylinder is still a parametric object. We have to reduce it to a polygon object. First of all, this doesn't make sense in this uh, example scene, but um, you should always keep in mind that the segmentation of a cylinder is, um, you know, it's um, resulting in a certain amount of polygons when you change, when you uh, alter this to a polygon object. So keep this in mind. You can reduce the number of segments of the cylinder to keep the polygon count low. Let's stick to 12, for example. This is not crucial in this scene, but I'm always doing this and would like to remind you of this. So, 
press C for converting into a polygon object and now I can change my axis system. I just have to click on the change axis or modify axis symbol, <coughs> which normally is um, at this place somewhere, but as you can see I have a different layout. And now I can move this axis system down to the bottom. And as you will see later on, it's not very crucial that this um, zero axis zero point is on the very exact uh, bottom of the object, because on a 3D tree it looks a little bit different. So I won't bother with exactness uh, at this place, and just, you know, do it that it looks right. Okay, so this should do. And as soon as you switch on the cloner tool again, oh, I would like to deactivate this, to not get confused later on, deactivate this um, modify axis button, and then I switch the cloner on again, and as you can see, the cylinders now are positioned correctly. Okay, and don't bother with this. When you uncheck the cylinder, it's gone. Okay, so this was it. And this is um, basically something to keep in mind because um, later on when you place real 3D objects, this is responsible for the height it's positioned on some given object. Okay, so what can we do next? First of all, this random arrangement is quite good, but then you would like to have a certain um, difference in scaling, a difference in rotation, and a difference in, um, well, in scaling and rotation for trees, because this enables you to just have one tree object, one single tree object, multiplying in a scene like this, and just not looking all the same in every copy. So this is of course crucial because then you can take only one object and have it look like a real wood. So how do we do this? We click on the cloner object and choose the random effector. This is one of the effectors you can use on the cloner tool and it's one thing to, you know, it's a standard. It's um, something you most often use when using the cloner tool. So um, I put this into my interface too. You can see the button here, and when you click on this, you have the random effector applied on my cloner object. And this is because I had the cloner clicked on before, and as soon as you do this and choose the random effector from this menu, you you have this random effector imposed on the cloner object. So you can see this by clicking on the cloner object and uh, look for the effectors tab, and there's random effector. So this random effector works on this cloning process we've already achieved. And the basic parameters to change, you know, it's, it's very, you, know, you might get confused when seeing all those parameters, but the most basic parameters you want to change are the position, scale, and rotation of a cloning arrangement. So in this case, what we definitely don't need is a change in position because our random, our cloner tool already did this random arrangement for us and by using the seed values and count values we can change the kind of arrangement. So we don't need the random effector moving around all those trees again, so we just uncheck this. And as you can see the, the original arrangement made by the cloner tool is um, to be seen. Okay, but what we definitely want to have randomly changed is scale and rotation. So. First of all, dealing with the scale, um, with the scaling of the trees. To make it simple, you just can choose for a uniform scale. So whatever scaling is done, it's done in all three dimensions. And as you can see, there is zero put as a value for scaling. So it obviously has to be something more or different, at least different than zero. Let's decide for one. And this is rather dramatic, as you can see. So move this arrow around it to see what happens. Quite funny, isn't it? So you just can decide for some value which makes it look rather real, like for trees, let's say two point, um, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, something like that. So when I'm talking about trees and woods and stuff like that, I can tell you that, um, you know, 
since I'm dealing with this in the virtual environment like the Cinema 4D program, I take much more care when walking around with my dog in the woods and, 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 and sceneries like that. I'm watching trees and I'm watching this, the kind of arrangement trees are standing. And you should do the same, just, just try to understand how trees are arranged in woods, <laughs> are growing, you know. It's not, um, it's not that um, randomly as you might think. Okay, but back to our process of cloning and uh, looking for a realistic looking wood. So this is the scaling, and as you can see, the um, bottom points are still the same. This is because our axis system had been changed before, and this is quite nice. Okay, so the rotation too, we can change all the three angles. Of course, with the cylinder, it doesn't make sense to change the R point H angle, but for real 3D trees, it makes sense to put a 360 inside this, because this enables the random effect to turn around trees from 0 to 360 degrees. But then, in, even in this uh, example, you can change the RP and RB angle, and this is quite nice, and this makes for a more realistic looking dummy wood. Okay. Just do as you like. It, it's, not, it's not very, you know, you can just change values and decide whatever looks correct to you. Okay, so this is cloning. This is using the random effector on trees, on copies. One more thing I would like to uh, stress, and we'll see later on that for rendering this is very, very crucial. We have to check render instances because this makes the copies um, caused by this cloner object being rendered more efficiently than um, we would have if it was not checked. So you'll see later on that this makes a huge difference in render time. Render instances. Good, so there is some more stuff to see and I would like to show you how you can um, treat the plane because um, in the end we'll need some terrain and this is just too abstract looking. This is just horizontal and we don't want a horizontal plane but we want something that can be sculpted. So let's first of all enhance the count value to make it a little bit more fun and then stick to the plane and as you might know you can modify a horizontal plane using the magnet tool but not of course in as long as it's a parametric object. So we convert it to a polygon object, pressing C, go to point mode, selecting all the points, choose the magnet tool, and playing around with the magnet tool. And as you will see, this radius um, with um, active radius 100 centimeters is just too small. Because you might know the magnet tool in allows you to not just move one point, but neighboring points too. So I'll uh, redo this, enhance the radius to let's say 500. <coughs> and as you can see, mm, some transformation is changed. Some transformation I did already. And now you can mold this sculpted the way you like. Have it look a little bit more like a natural terrain. And which is of course great fun is that the trees all stand stand up the right way because they're fixed to this plane by the clone tool. And you can also, uh, when you using the magnet tool, you can confine this um, movement to the y direction. If you want um, want to have the terrain changing in from from above, you just can confine the transformation to the y direction. As I said, you can set the x value to 0 and the z value to 0 too, and then it's only doing this in the z direction. Okay. So this is rather dramatic. This magnet tool is a very, um, you know, it, it's very versatile and you can choose different kinds of 
transformation mode. This is Bell. You can also choose um, Circle, which is a little bit little different. Spline. Ah, spline is. Let's take the needle. This wouldn't make sense for a natural terrain for a wood, but then again, in other situations, it might be apt for you. The dome. linear and you can move around all those oh. there was some you can you can uh, do funny things using the spline um, function you see that there is molds building up there and it's just you know, using the spline curve I defined here. Okay, but of course this is not what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to show you how to you, how you, how you can sculpt this plane and just achieving a little bit more realistic looking terrain. Okay, so this is sculpting the terrain, and as you have those cylinders copied via the cloning tool, the trees move along with the plane. So this is one thing I would, uh, would like to show you. Then there is a, another thing. You can mix um, variations of one object or different objects in one cloner. So I would show you how this works. You just copy the cylinder inside this cloner object by pressing Control or Command and dragging this cylinder just one step down. So you've got two cylinders. And as you can see, nothing changes in the scene. So this is because the cylinder exactly looks the same in both uh, dimensions. And <clears throat> you, don't, you don't see any difference. You will see a difference when applying different, assigning different um, materials to these cylinders and the first should be let's say red and the second should be let's say green and now you can see that there is a mixture of um, trees of dummy trees and it's mixing them in the same amount that is 50% is red cylinders 50% is green cylinders and what you should do normally is you should put the cloning mode of um, how to handle those different elements inside this cloner tool from iterate to random. So this is uh, changing this exact 50% uh, relation and it's um, also changing the positioning of those trees because when iterating it's it's building pairs and you didn't it was difficult to see in this random scenery but you can see it here that um, as for example, here we have random again, as you can see, and when you put this to iterate, it'll make groups. And you can see that uh, we've got um, more than two elements inside the cloner here, and it's just the cube, which is red, and the cylinder, which is green, and the cube is there six in six, um, uh, six cubes, and the cylinder is only one, so this makes for this uh, relation from always five rows of um, or six rows of uh, red cubes and one row of um, green cylinders. So this is iteration, this is uh, blend and this is sort. So none of these is correct for you when building up a tree, a wood scene, but random. Okay, so let's switch back to my um, example. So, and as you could see in my other sample scene, when you, you can change the relation, the number, the numeric relation between uh, red and green cylinders by just duplicating one of those. Let's say you want more green cylinders, just duplicate this green cylinder. Oops. And as you can see, the number of green cylinders in this arrangement is growing until there's only very little red cylinders left. Okay? And we we'll see what this, um, what we can make make of this later on when dealing with real 3D trees. There is one last thing I would like to show you. Still dealing with a cloner object, the cloner tool, and showing you the potential of this um, tool for setting up a natural scenery. 
So let's say we have a real dense word, but we would like to have um, parts of our terrain not to be grown with woods. So how do we do this? Okay, let's... Um, okay, so what do we do? You can confine the cloner process, the cloning process, to a selection. You can see that in the, the Objects tab of my cloner object there is a field called Selection and this allows to um, tell the cloner object a certain selection of polygons should be used for this cloning process and again by inverting this um, another group of polygons is not to be grown with uh, trees. Of course you need stuff like that when you've got a house standing on this terrain or something else or if you just want to have a, a, a place free of trees. So how do you do this? You go to the plane object, you click on this, choose polygon mode and then you select some polygons that you don't want to be crowded with trees. Uh, let's take the middle of it. I'm just painting. Okay. So, this shouldn't be um, crowded with trees, but as you could see, my cloner is asking for a selection where he may grow trees. So what we have to do, we have to invert the selection first. Invert. And now I can save the selection via set selection. And now I've got the selection tab. Okay, and now I switch back to my cloner and pull this small selection tag inside this field and whoops the trees have gone. Okay. So this is the last thing I wanted to show you. How to keep certain areas free of cloning copies and how to mix copies, um, how to mix copies of objects inside one cloner object, how to use the random effector to change scaling and position and, and <coughs> not position, I'm sorry, but um, scaling and rotation and how this is all basically done. So this is the technical mechanical part of um, setting up a wooden scene. A wood scene, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, in the next step I'll try to show you how to replace those dummies with real 3D trees. Um, some other problems coming up then, especially render speed and how you can handle this. Okay, so see you in the second step. Bye.